At last, just the right amount to complete my sustenance. My body will be empowered and my muscles will receive strength. The work and sacrifice will all be worth it. <gasps> what are you doing? Eating tomato soup. In the dark? It's uh, called dark dining, where things taste better in the dark. Is that a thing? Yes. Are you positive? Be positive. What? What? Can I have some? Yes. Oh, sweet. Hello, Acolytes! Welcome to the Cleric Corner. My name is Riker, and here we talk about all things Dungeons & Dragons, tapping into our higher powers to create worlds more unique and stories more impactful. My question to you is, have you ever wanted to play a blood magic character, but found the lack of blood-related subclasses in Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition disappointing? And then not finding any blood-related subclasses, so you have to turn to homebrew only to have your dungeon master turn it down. Well, today we are going to fix that and we're going to talk about how to reflavor and reskin what we already have in 5th edition to make the sanguine character that you will love. And for the DMs to explore other options at your disposal as you create a world that is filled with this blood magic. But for those who don't know, blood magic is the archetype where you find power within blood itself, where power can be drawn from the pain that comes from spilt blood or the manipulation of blood itself, also called hemomancy or hemoturgy or sanguimancy. And unfortunately, again, Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition doesn't have really any official archetype that fits the blood magic genre. However, if you know about Critical Role and know about Matthew Mercer's Blood Hunter, you get an idea of what this might look like at your table. This video is largely inspired by the new campaign setting Critical Role just came out with, Tal'Dori Reborn, where we actually get to see two new blood-related subclasses with the Cleric and the Wizard. Now, this video isn't sponsored by them, Boy, I wish. But if you're playing a campaign within the Tal'Dori Reborn setting, or playing a homebrew campaign at home where you want to implement this blood magic, let's explore each class and find out which subclasses would be best to reflavor with a blood archetype. Stay to the end where I'll also go over feats and backgrounds that might help this flavor along as well. Also, your next character concept will not be in vain. And obviously trigger warning as we're talking a lot about blood. But starting from A to Z, let's start with the Artificer. And both the subclasses of the Alchemist and the Battlesmith actually fit quite well. With alchemy, you follow closely to the order of the mutant that's already done with the blood hunter. Here you can reflavor your elixirs as some sort of blood concoctions as you extract life essence. And sprinkling some real science in there, of course there's different kinds of blood, A positive, B positive, but also among the animal kingdom you'll have violet blood or green blood or even white blood. Perhaps your artificer knows exactly what kind of blood creates what kind of elixir. As for the battlesmith, they actually use blood as a battery for their contraptions, placing runes and then putting a drop of blood or a blood crystal on it to activate it. Or perhaps you have blood canisters that slowly drain away as it's used. These artificers are the best at combining life with machine. Next we have the barbarian. A little fun fact about the real world and the history of barbarians is that they actually were known to drink the blood of animals before they fought, believing that this gifted them the animal strength that embodied the blood, helping them go berserk. So in general, a lot of the subclasses will already fit this archetype in that way. And heck, you could even drink human blood if you really wanted to. And I'll actually go over this again in a future barbarian focused video as I'm going over class reskins in my better classes series. If you haven't seen them, definitely check them out. One barbarian subclass that I really think fits this archetype well is the berserker, because there is an element of self-harm that I want to talk about. The berserker's ability to frenzy, meaning bolstering their rage at the cost of exhaustion, which could easily be reflavored as cutting and bleeding in order to activate it. Now, of course, make sure that self-harm is something okay to explore at your table, but it's something that is very prevalent in blood magic, because sometimes it requires your own life essence in order to power your abilities. The Path of the Beast is also a great option if you wanted to reflavor similar to the Order of the Lycan in the Blood Hunter subclass, truly taking on a bestial nature as you drink blood like you would Gatorade right before the gym.
Legion, and you could possibly have undergone some sort of blood ritual to imbue yourself with this lycanthropy. With the Bard class, they use blood magic to manipulate and charm others. Who else is good at charming and has an affinity for blood? Vampires. You might have been a vampire thrall for a time, or a descendant of one using the Dampier lineage race. The College of Glamour is a strange yet really good subclass to feed this archetype. But instead of your charm and enchantment coming from a face source, it's more of a necrotic source. Your mantle is more one of fear, and you charm and command those enthralled by you. You can flavor the College of Whispers in a similar way, where you can also stab them with their own blood from the inside. And then a later ability where you can drink someone's blood in order to to transform into them. If you wanted more of a witchy type blood magic, then the College of Spirits fits nicely. If you've seen Stardust or The Witcher, cutting animals up and examining their entrails can be used in a lot of divination type magic. Now, clerics are a fun one because blood was often used in a lot of medicinal practices. The practices of bloodletting or using leeches to collect blood were popular, but honestly, you could reflavor all of your healing magic as some sort of blood stitching. And I know that Tal'Dorei Reborn, the campaign setting, gives us a blood domain cleric, but I think there are also other options that we can look at. There are entire blood cults that you can be a part of, or you could practice some type of voodoo magic. And strangely, the order domain cleric fits really well with a voodoo archetype, being able to manipulate both their allies and their enemies with enchantment. You can siphon off blood life essence with the death domain or give life essence with the life domain, because not all blood magic is evil. And in many cultures, the most powerful blood blood magic actually comes from female menstruation, which are also tied to the circles of moon and can be used in love potions. And with the moon cycles, it would be also a fun way to reflavor your druid as well. Your power could be taken straight from a blood moon, but there's honestly a lot that we can explore with the druid. I should mention that blood was also used in agriculture, where your blood was used as nutrients for plants. Perhaps your eight hour plant growth spell requires a living sacrifice. The circle of spores druid is an excellent reflavor for their necrotic damage in pulling life essence, a halo of blood spores, and being able to revive corpses with their blood. But what I think would even be a cooler idea is exploring the four humors. And for those of you who don't remember the four humors in high school, it's where medicine took four elements, blood, yellow bile, black bile, and phlegm, as the makeup of the human body. Whenever you were sick, it meant you were out of balance in one of these elements. And each of these humors, as they were called, also tied into the elements of fire, water, earth, and air. So naturally, the moon druid would be a fun one to dive into the science of it. Not to mention you being able to transform into beasts with blood magic. But going back to voodoo, you know what other class would be really good for it? the fighter, but more specifically the battle master where you reflavor your maneuvers as blood curses and blood magic manipulating your enemy. And just by sensing the blood of your enemy, you can ascertain information about it. Blood magic being the life essence itself is also known to bring immortality and strength which is why the Rune Knight subclass would be really good as you carve blood runes into your arm to bolster yourself with this strength. Perhaps as you grow, your blood and your skin boil into something misshapen or Jekyll-like. Overall, fighters would be known to just bolster their attacks with this blood magic, so feel free to explore some other subclasses as well. Now, before we move on, if you think that this video is adding value to you, consider liking and subscribing to the channel. There is so much that we can do with fantasy and creativity, and I want you to be a part of it as we explore the endless possibilities. If you are subscribed, join our Discord linked below to continue the conversation and be around like-minded people. That said, let's take a look at what a blood monk might look like. As the class goes, they empower their strikes with key, but what if the key power source was just reflavored as blood? You channel life essence to hit hard and move fast. And as you consume blood yourself, you are gifted with the immortality that I mentioned briefly earlier. These monks use practices in blood to reach exaltation or enlightenment. Perhaps their self-harm is a reminder of their mortality as they practice a mind over body exercise. Both the way of the long death and the way of mercy monks would be really good at the dichotomy between pulling life essence and giving it. You could get drunk on blood or blood frenzy with the way of the drunkard. Or if you wanted to explore the four humors like the druid did, you can use the way of the four elements. But now we get to be a little unique with the paladin as they're known 
to make oaths with their subclasses. In the perspective of blood magic, perhaps these oaths were blood packs or blood oaths. It could have been weighed with themselves, or they keep a vial of blood around their neck from someone they made the oath with, their blood brother. Now, because paladins all have this unique oath type flavor, it actually was kind of hard to pick one out specifically that would be good to flavor as blood magic. That said, the Oath of Redemption subclass might be a good fit as their spell list could be reflavored as blood magic manipulating people. And then your features allow you to transfer life from one person to the next, as well as self-healing. And then later in levels, you get resistance to attacks as perhaps your blood hardens your skin. And then of course, not forgetting the paladin's ability to smite, you can easily reflavor those as blood brands. I would even argue for your DMs to allow you to replace radiant damage with necrotic damage in this case. But for the next class, the ranger, we're going to look at at blood magic in regards to survival and tracking. You could have samples of blood from your favored enemy that you use in your divination magic to track them. You can pick out a blood trail just by sense and your hunter's mark is more of a brand of castigation. And being experts in natural and animals alike, you can also use the animal entrails as magical foci as mentioned earlier. But with beasts and blood magic, maybe you went more of the Frankenstein route or perhaps Frankenweenie. Having your bestial companions be an amalgamation of stitched flesh empowered and reanimated with blood magic. You can use both the Beastmaster or a very unique Drake Warden Ranger. I'd also say that the Hunter subclass would also fit more of the tracking blood aspect, as well as reflaving their abilities to blood brands. Or if you wanted to use leeches that we mentioned earlier, or mosquitoes or sturges, it would make a very unique Swarm Keeper Ranger. Yeah, someone swarmed in leeches would be terrifying. But as we continue to the Rogue, we get to reflavor one of its subclass, like the Order of the Ghost Slayer Blood Hunter. With the pursuit of the undeath, their blood magic has given them the ability to transfer into the ethereal. The Phantom Rogue subclass might be able to see the separation between the blood and the life essence that it gives off. Your Whales of the Grave feature could be this blood magic pulling the life essence from your target. It might even be fun to use the Soul Knife Rogue, reflaving your psychic blades as blood blades. They can cut their palms and create these blood daggers that harden when they hit the enemy and return back into blood when it comes back to the sender. And technically you could flavor any weapon wielding subclass with this, or these blades could have a similar effect to the Crimson Rites, specifically the Rite of the Oracle, of course, giving off psychic damage. But now the funny thing about sorcerers is their magic comes from their bloodline. A sorcerer that practices blood magic might have an overabundance of this life energy within them. This abundance allows them to manipulate blood in a very unique way. Take the Shadow Sorcerer, for example. How would it be to reflavor your Shadow Hound as instead a bloodhound, your own blood leaving your body and taking a shape of this animal, or your umbral form ability, you could take on a blood form instead, or your lineage could be vampiric and you could turn into some sort of blood cloud. But if you wanted to do more of a healing type blood magic, of course, the divine soul sorcerer would be an excellent pick, even possibly getting blood wings later in levels. And this would be a cool nod to the blood eagle in Viking culture. If you don't know what that is, look it up with parent supervision. Now, another bit of history, blood magic was often given to an individual through making a deal with a demon. So exploring the warlock class, we have a lot of options as well. And it also goes without saying that the order of the profane soul blood hunter came from a warlock flavor. The fiend subclass would be an obvious choice if you went the demon deal route, but also the hex blade you could reflavor to be more of the paladin flavor that we talked about. With the pact of the talisman, it would be easy to have a vial of blood of someone that you made that pact with, or to have that connection with a party member, you do need blood from each other. Your sword imbued with blood magic might do the blood branding for you, even always looking like it's covered in blood, no matter how much you clean it. But you could also go the Pact of the Tome, where you get a lich's book filled with blood magic formulas. But be careful, your patron might require you to drink blood or collect blood for their own unknown purposes. But speaking of blood magic formulas, let's look at the Sanguine Scholar, the Wizard. Knowing we had a blood magic option for the Wizard in the Tal'Dorei campaign setting, let's explore what other possibilities we have. One thing I do imagine blood-focused spellcasters to do is write their own spells 
in their own blood. It might even be fun if you wanted to homebrew taking penalties to hit points instead of a gold cost when they copy down spells. The Order of the Scribes Wizard is perfect for this as both your quill and book act as a blood horcrux. Your manifest mind feature is the blood from your book lifting off the page and taking form. And this could be a reflection of part of your soul. As for reflavoring some spells, you can take a look at some 3.5 spells as they did have some blood related spells namely Blade Thirst and Blood Stars, Blood Lightning and Belton's Burning Blood. The Blade Singer Wizard could obviously be a bloody gish that you reflavor like previous melee classes that we discussed. The great thing about the wizard is if you're using blood as a magical foci, then all of your spells can be blood focused or blood related. So pulling this life essence, divination, enchantment and transmutation are all very relevant schools of magic. Although I might steer away from necromancy as technically skeletons don't really have have blood, but if you can make it work, go right ahead. But now let's look at some feats. And I must warn you, a lot of these are for flavor, so it might not be as optimal as other feats, but the flavor is there. So even if you're not a spellcaster, adding additional blood magic for utility is a good idea. So using feats like Magic Initiate or Fey Touched might be an extension of the blood magic that you have. I think Fey Touched, you can get Hunter's Mark and give any creature a blood brand. If you wanted the narrative of doing blood rituals, Ritual Caster would be an excellent choice to do that narratively. If you wanted your character to have the ability to stitch wounds with blood magic, the healer feats would help with that. And knowing that those who deal with blood magic oftentimes have high constitution, any feat that increases that would be a good choice, like the durable feat. Or you could go the tough feat and just get a bunch of hit points. Or the alert feat might be fun to reskin as sensing blood around you. As far as backgrounds go, you could be an acolyte coming from some sort of blood cult. Or the haunted one, as it definitely fits the blood hunter aesthetic. Or a sage that has been a practitioner of blood magic for some time. Or a simic scientist if you wanted to go more of the blood scientist scientist route. But again, all of these are just suggestions and you have full creativity to reflavor and do as you will. I just hope that our exploration into these archetypes helped you brainstorm for your next blood themed character or the next blood NPC that you throw at your players. As a last minute thought, it might even be fun to replace limited use ability slots with hit dice instead. So you would expend hit dice in order to use your abilities or use your abilities beyond what other slots that you have. But if you come up with how to reflavor some other subclasses that I didn't mention, or you're playing some sort of blood magic type character right now, let me know in the comments below. But in the meantime, go out there and spread the good word of D&D and make the world a better place, both on and off your tables. See you in the next one.